let's run down the lineup for tonight's 261 Tigers uh, versus Poole National League match, one of the most important this season. And in the frame, you see Steve Lawson, followed by Shane Bowes and Kenny McKenna. Moving now to Phil Jeffrey at number four. Number five, Charlie McKenna. Number six, it's younger brother Martin McKenna. And completing the Tigers lineup, Jeff Powell. Team manager for Glasgow tonight, as ever, Jim McMillan. Moving over to the Pool Pirates side, at number one it's Alan Rossiter. At number two for Pool, Gary Allen. At number three it's Lee Adams. Number four for the Pool Pirates tonight, tracking they have Al Craig Boyce. At number five, Ali Stevens. Number six, Kevin Smart, and completing the pool lineup is Tony Langan. And a uh, more experienced team manager for the pool parents you won't find, and that's Neil Street. Well, the pool parents come to Glasgow on the first leg of the Northern Tour with matches against Berwick tomorrow and Edinburgh on Sunday, but at Sheffield tonight you won't find many people giving you odds on a Glasgow victory following a lacklustre display last week against Edinburgh and an out of sorts defeat by Ipswich two weeks ago. So how are the 261 Tigers going to fare against the Pool Pirates this evening? It's going to be a real nail-biter right to the end. If the, the 261 Tigers are in the right mood, well, who knows? They may bring the two National League points to Glasgow. It's going to be one to sit back and enjoy tonight. National League racing the 261 Tigers and the Pool Echo Pirates. So off we go in heat one of tonight's match and as usual in heat one it's Steve Lawson in the red helmet of uh, gate two, his partner in blue Shane Bowes, for the Pool Echo Pirates Alan Rossiter and he's backed up by Gary Allen. The home skipper looking to uh, improve the performance he had last Sunday at uh, Edinburgh when uh, very disappointing six points from the skipper. He blames it all on carburetor bike problems, but uh, the surprise for the home fans was that he didn't switch to number two bike. So let's see how he does tonight. It's all going to depend on a full score from uh, Steve Lawson and uh, Kenny McKenna, and a lot of backup from the second string Shane Bowes and Phil Jeffrey. But it's Alan Rossiter who's setting the pace in heat number one, snapped up from Swindon during the winter by the Pool Echo Pirates, uh, joining another of the long line of riders who have switched to National League and thoroughly enjoying the switch. And thoroughly enjoying heat number one, Alan Roster leads the home skipper, Steve Lawson at the present moment, while Shane Bowes sits at the back, getting the flying shield covering his visor, but uh, he's doing the wise thing, he's allowing his home skipper to challenge Alan Roster and just sit back and pick up any mistakes. So still Alan Roster leading Steve Lawson with Shane Bowes in third place and Gary Allen tailing off in fourth place. They're all over the line and it's three points for the 261 Tigers and three points for the Pool Echo Pirates. Neil McFarlane, the first time I've spoken to you all season. How are, you are you pleased with your team's performance so far? I'm reasonably pleased, Chris, I must admit. We, we had some hiccups early on in the season where a lot of um, adverse publicity went against us. But, you know, in general terms, I'm quite pleased. It was always going to be a difficult season, you know, but um, no, we're reasonably happy. One defeat at home. Can't complain. Pool Echo Pirates say uh, their top tip for the top. How do you think we'll cope with them? Um, with a bit of difficulty. I mean, we're now talking after Heat 1. Stevie didn't make the gate again. We're just not getting out of the box at home. I don't know why. If we don't get out of the box against these teams, we're going to struggle. So it's not only the punters around Shawfield who are worried about tonight's match, but also promoter Neil McFarlane. And just to tidy up Heat 1 again, the winning time for uh, Alan Roster was 68 seconds. We are on to Heat number 2 now with Martin McKinnon, Jeff Powell. Kevin Smart and Tony Langdon, Heat 2 of National League Racing, the 261 Tigers and the Pool Echo Pirates. Heat number 2, where a lot of matches are won and lost, it, uh, a lot can depend on the reserves and we're looking for mighty things from Jeff Powell and Martin McKenna, but Martin won't do it uh, rearing at the gate like that, and you can see the two Pool Echo Pirates seize the opportunity, streak into the front, and in fact Martin bulks his own partner Jeff Powell and leaves him a bad last. Tony Langdon glances across and has plenty of time to do so to see that it's his partner Kevin Smart sitting there and no doubt these two will be tying together for some team tactics to block the challenge of Martin McKinnon at the back. 
But uh, Martin McKenna, as we know, never says die until that checkered flag drops, and you can see that he's creeping closer and closer and closer to Kevin Smart. Let's watch with interest just to see what happens here. Can Kevin Smart keep out the battling Martin? And there you are, the wheel tucked up on the inside. And will he take him on this corner? He's pushing him hard and uh, pushes him just too hard because down from both Martin and Kevin Smart. Right, let's have another quick look at that one again because that was an interesting incident on the third and fourth bends there. Kevin Smart still down. We watch as Martin comes up challenging hard on the inside there and uh, here's the pass, but uh, Kevin seems to move in and tries to take the centre line, but uh, comes across the front of Martin McKenna, starts to drop, and there you see it, Martin has nowhere to go and punches into the back wheel of Kevin Smart, bundling both himself and Kevin right over the top of the two bikes there. Well, what will the referee Gus McLeod make of that one? I must say that I'm a bit undecided as to who was maybe to blame there. Had that been the first bend, it might have been first bend bunching, but it's Martin who's out. Referee Gus McLeod uh, judging that Martin just uh, challenged too hard there, uh, bringing down Kevin Smart, and as he walks dejectedly away, there's still some concern about the poor Echo Pirates rider. And concern indeed, as you see him being carried into the ambulance with an obvious shoulder injury, and uh, unfortunately I don't think we're going to see Kevin tonight again. So we're into a rerun of heat number two, and of course with uh, Kevin Smart being unable to take his place in the rerun uh, due to that injury, he, he, Kevin being the reserve for the Pool Echo Pirates, and Martin McKenna being excluded, it's down to Jeff Powell and uh, Tony Langdon to score the points for their respective teams. And Jeff Powell making another of those super starts and uh, holding it down the back straight, and I would say that Tony Langdon is going to have a very, very difficult job to go around the big leggy fellow here. As we've seen this a couple of times this season, when Jeff hits the front, uh, gets a bit between his teeth, he's away and a very, very difficult man to pass, even although he's the only man in the track in front of you. And you just watch the efforts of Tony Langdon here as he tries just to do that. He's a good rider when he gets to the front, is Jeff. Uh, maybe a bit stuck at the back at times when he's in the bunch, but uh, when he gets his nose in the front, you can see that he uses the track very, very wisely. And uh, although look at Tenny Langdon round the outside here, can he squeeze through? Because uh, it's, <laughs> goodness gracious, what a tremendous race for a, a match race, really, between these two riders. Uh, had Jeff Powell just given Tony uh, another six inches there, I'm sure he would have been through. But uh, Jeff was pushing, pushing, pushing all the way down that uh, front straight and uh, Tony said, no, nope, I've uh, decided not to take it down there. So that's a fine win for uh, Jeff Powell and second place, Tony Langdon. Jeff, you certainly pulled the points out of the bag when they were needed in heat two. Yeah, it, uh, we bike packed in on, on the parade. I had to buy one of uh, Steve Larson's bikes. And the first race that happened when I went out on this, I got used to it and in the rear one, it just happened, so I need a dream now. And I see you're taking the bike apart. I hope there's no problem, is there? Well, my jaw was out of action for tonight, so I'm on Steve Larson's bike, so... All thanks to Steve. Yes, all thanks to Steve for that marvellous heat too, which I'm sure it must be one of the best of the season so far. Aye, I'm glad to be in here, but it's pressure on yourself when you're going on like that. And the bike not being, not me being used to, that was different than all, so I'm just pleased. Thank you very much then. Thank you. Right. Well, a moment for Jeff Powell to enjoy yet again, and although he says it's all thanks to Steve, it's Jeff who has to ride the bike. Jeff's time was 69.2, and of course, as we run into heat number three, the Tigers are standing one point ahead with six points to the Pool Echo Pirates five. Heat three, Charlie McKenna, the bustling Charlie McKenna, Phil Jeffrey, Ali Stevens, and Craig Boyce. 
is Phil Jeffrey back to form? That's the question the Glasgow pundits are asking themselves. And Phil Jeffrey answers that immediately with a streak to the front and followed by the bustling Charlie McKenna as he shoulders his way through past Craig Boyce. But Craig Boyce comes straight back at him and this one's not all over yet. Uh, good to see that Phil Jeffrey looks as if he's shaken off that nasty virus and that uh, very, very bad whack he got with the bike at the starting gate a couple of weeks back. And he's off and running. Craig Boyce is off and running in second place. And uh, Charlie, after making a very good challenge in the first and second heats, or first and second laps, is finding himself some distance behind. And uh, he's going to be in danger of losing that third place if he doesn't watch it with Ali Stevens coming up on the back there. So it's uh, Phil Jeffrey up front and this will do his confidence the world of good rolling over that line in first place at the end of four laps however he's still about three quarters of a lap to go but uh, looks to be fairly safe and the positions in fact of heat four look to be fairly settled in this last lap position. So much to the relief of the crowd and welcoming him back to form Phil Jeffrey followed by Kenny, uh, sorry, followed by Craig Boyce in the third place Charlie McKenna. 4-2 for the Tigers, it's uh, 10 points to the 261 Tigers, 7 to the Puleco Pirates, all achieved in a time of 68.2 seconds. Heat 4, the McKenna brothers once again, and this time it's Kenny McKenna and Martin McKenna, and Martin clashes with Tony Langdon there, and uh, that's another involvement with Martin, he's... Uh, Can you tell us what happened there? Well, I reckon the man in the yellow and black took Martin out and the other fella Adam scoped it because he was overtaking Martin when Martin was driven out. I'd say Martin was faultless. Definitely yellow and blacks to blame. Whether it was revenge for the first incident, I don't know, but I blame him. The referee was correct with what he'd done. And who do you think will come out tonight? I think we'll win. Well, <laughs> I'm glad to see somebody with a lot of confidence. Well, certainly, why not? We can beat Wimbledon, we can beat this lot. Thank you. Can you tell us what happened there? Uh, going into the first turn, uh, what was the bloke's name? Oh, your number six rider. He was sort of starting a bit close in my grip position, but I didn't worry about that. Anyway, as we took off, I made a bit of a bad start, but as we were going into the first turn, he really sort of leaned on me hard with his left shoulder, and it just jammed my right shoulder on, and I couldn't get the throttle off, you know? And even if I was going to get the throttle off, I couldn't because he had my arm sort of jammed in there, so I had to. I could have easily kept it on and just gone straight into the fence, but I thought I'd better turn, and it knocked him off. But I had a word with the referee, and he said, "Oh well, I'm sorry, but you know, there's nothing we can do about it. It's done now. So basically, I just got to put it behind me and keep going. Hopefully." <laughs> How are you finding conditions tonight? Yeah, good. I like the track, uh, shape-wise, uh, surface. It's really good. So hopefully, we'll be able to pull off a win. Be nice. It looks as if it's going to be a very interesting and close match. Yeah, it'll be close for sure. It'll be a last heat decider, I think. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much then. No worries. <laughs> Young Tony Langdon exuding confidence in spite of being excluded in heat number four. The referee are judging him to be at fault for bringing Martin McKenna down. Uh, lots of referees would probably have brought him back there for first bend bunching, but uh, Gus McLeod made his decision, and all credit to him, he stuck by it. And sticking by the racing line here is Martin McKinna. He's fired up after those two incidents. And look at this chopping and changing as uh, Lee Adams fires through the centre of the two McKinna brothers. And I think the two McKinna brothers got themselves in a bit of a fankle as they try to sort things out on that uh, fourth bend and end up making a complete mess of it. It looked as if uh, Kenny was waiting for uh, Martin to come through. Martin didn't come through and uh, uh, through the gaping hole came Lee Adams. And uh, when Lee Adams gets in front, even of mighty Kenny McKenna, it's going to be very, very difficult for the Tiger to pull this one back. Kenny McKenna, of course, is buoyant as ever throughout the bad couple of weeks that the Tigers have experienced here, but uh, he needs a lot of backup here, and uh, he also needs to produce his best form tonight against the Puleco Pirates. So Martin out of it, wisely sitting back and making sure of the single point for the Tigers, but it's all between uh, Kenny and uh, Lee Adams here, still holding the front position in uh, front of the home Tiger and uh, receiving applause as he comes over the line for three points. The Tigers also take three points and the score remain. The score stays four points up, or three points apart with 13 to the 261 Tigers and 10 to the Echo Pirates. And Heat 4 win was achieved in a time of 69 seconds. 
Heat five, a second appearance for Fool Jeffrey. Can he repeat the dosage of his first race? And he's backed up by the man they call Cha Cha Charlie, although he's not too keen in that name at all. But uh, he has up against him the mighty Alan Roster and Gary Allen. How will the Tigers fare in heat number five? And they look to be faring very, very well. Uh, not noted as the best of starters, the 261 Tigers, but uh, the pairing here of uh, Charlie and Phil certainly put that beyond them, and they made a super start in Heat 5 and roared to the front with Charlie in the lead and Phil Jeffrey on the inside. And trailing at the back is Gary Allen, and Alan Rossiter dropped completely at the start of Heat 5. So that's, a, I would say, a bit of a surprise for uh, both the home crowd and for the Pool Echo Pirates because uh, they would have expected Alan Roster to take this heat at least. But uh, there you are, Charlie and uh, Phil Jeffrey do the business for the 261 Tigers and Gary Allen left to do the chasing behind Phil Jeffrey. You can see Charlie constantly checking over his shoulder there just to ensure that his uh, young partner is sitting safely on the inside. And uh, as long as he's sitting on the inside and Charlie's covering the outside, Gary Allen's going to have one heck of a job trying to split this pairing, especially on their home track. And you can see Gary looking for the holes in the inside, and he could have one here if Phil doesn't watch it. He just made that to the line and nearly dropped the point right on the line. So the Tigers take a crucial 5-1 and increase their lead. 5-1, how unexpected. I don't know, it may be unexpected, but desperately needed. Unfortunately, that brings us, um, I think we're more than seven points clear now. Or six points, rather, which means they could bring in a tactical, but I don't know if they have or not. It's certainly fairly close and exciting racing, anyway. So far, I mean, these boys, you know, it looks like they're going to win the league. They're, um, you know, they're not to be taken lightly. Everyone's going to be a hard race. They have been so far, and I don't think it's going to change for the rest of the meeting. This will only be their fourth defeat this season. If we can do it, do you think we've got uh, much of a chance? Of course we've got a chance. Good grief, we're further ahead of pool now than what we were against Edinburgh last week, but anything can happen. I'm not going to say anything. As I say, every, every race is hard, and uh, who's to say what's going to happen now? It's a long way to go. Ten races. Thank you very much, then. Pleasure. <laughs> Words of wisdom from Charlie, and yes, Charlie, the answer is they are bringing in a tactical substitute in the shape of Tony Langdon in the yellow and black helmet to partner Lee Adams, and uh, the home cause won't be helped by that uh, flip by Shane Bowes there, completely making a mess of the start, and uh, that puts the Tigers at a disadvantage right away, just when they had picked up that seven points of a lead and uh, really needed to hammer home the advantage, but uh, they've lost that now because... Uh, the skipper is struggling behind the rider in white, Lee Adams, and in fact, if he doesn't watch his tail end here, he could be struggling behind Tony Langdon, the tactical substitute brought in by team manager Neil Street. So an unfortunate flip there for uh, Shane Bowes. That uh, would have been an interesting race if Shane had been mixing it with the home skipper, but uh, that's not to be, and uh, Steve Lawson finds himself in second place. And not challenging at the present moment on uh, Lee Adams, and again, Tony Langdon sitting at the back and actually looking around, so he's considered he's settling himself for the third point. Steve making a bit of heavy weather of the turns this evening, and uh, it may be that uh, the alterations he's made to his bike just haven't suited the, the track this evening. And uh, certainly suiting the track is the man in the white helmet, Lee Adams, scores three points, Steve Lawson two, and Tony Langdon one. How do you think Shane will fare tonight? All right. That's it, all right. Yeah. He's going to score double points, I can see. 70 pence a point, you better get a lot. And during all the incidents here at Shawfield tonight, we better keep you up to the score. After the last heat there, it was 2015. The Tigers dropping two points, just uh, five points of a leeway now, and the time in heat six was 69 seconds. But we're into heat seven, and in heat seven, it's the McKinnon brothers in the shape of Kenny and Martin against Ali Stevens and Craig Boyce. Kenny off the inside gate and Martin off gate three and they made a good start at the front, although uh, as I say that, Martin makes a mess of his corner and Kenny gets cut out by Craig Boyce coming firing up the inside. I don't think Kenny was expecting that one and uh, he sets down, gets the head down and starts to chase. So that's two races where the Scotland's number one has found it mighty, mighty tough and uh, as I said earlier, these are the two guys, Steve Lawson and Kenny McKinnon, we're depending on to pile in the big points and some backup from the younger fellas with uh, points to push them over the top for a win. 
But Kenny's not lying down. He's giving this all he can. And he's firing the bike into the corners. But so is Craig Boyce. All credit to the Pool Echo Pirates here. Uh, Craig Boyce has got to the front. He's uh, picked up the line fine here at Shawfield. And he's hugging that inside line and holding the outsides going down the streets where the passing takes place. Opportunity is there, but Kenny wasn't in the uh, best of positions to slip through the hole that Craig Boyce had left. And uh, I'm sure he won't make too many mistakes like that. As you can see, he's holding it tight against the inside line. And that's the line that Kenny likes to pass, but he's not going to do it in heat number seven. He's second behind Craig Boyce. And in third place, Martin McKenna. Points divided three all, still 5.78 in the teams at 23 for Glasgow, 18 for Poole. And that was achieved in a time of 79.69.2. Heat 8. A lot of matches heat hinge on Heat 8. And we have here Shane Bowes and Jeff Powell up against Gary Allen and Tony Langdon. And Jeff making an absolute miserable mess of bend number one. And uh, Shane still having problems holding the front wheel of that bike on the track. And he's got to do that because he's the man that the Tigers are depending on here to score some points. And uh, he's having a fight all the way here with the man in the white helmet, uh, Gary Allen. And you can see chopping and changing for second and third place here, while uh, Tony Lyndon says thanks very much. He gets on with the business up front. And uh, let's watch this fascinating duo here for second and third. As Shane Bowes comes back through again, Gary Allen finds a bit of trouble on the corner and hits the dirt. And Shane slips through into second place and sets after Tony Langdon. Firing the bike into the corner, but Shane, you won't do it that way. There's no gaps there. That's better. Up the inside now, and he tries to push Tony Langdon out, but Tony's not going to do that. He's uh, an experienced rider for his young years, and he's holding that line, and he's not going to be intimidated by Shane Bowe's antics here. Now, this is a tremendous heat eight, and one of the best we've seen in a long time here at Shawfield. And all credit to the three riders coming home there for uh, two points for the 261 Tigers and four for the Pool Echo Pirates. They reduce the leeway even further to three points, 25-22. And surprise, surprise, Tony Langdon in for heat number nine. Well, it's no surprise to anyone who saw that uh, effort there in heat number eight. So it's Tony Langdon and Lee Adams uh, for the Pool Echo Pirates up against Charlie McKenna and Phil Jeffrey. Charlie McKenna making a good start, but uh, Phil Jeffrey not picking up the drive just so well this time and finds himself stone last. And uh, it's up to him now to start nibbling away at the two riders in front of him and try and open up that gap again for the 261 Tigers. Charlie McKenna looking fairly safe. The riders hitting a bump or two on that first bend. The Pool Echo Pirates holding second and third places with Phil Jeffrey just sitting there and uh, hopefully waiting for a gap to open up. But I'm afraid you're going to have to work at it, Phil. It's not going to be that easy. Not against the team of the caliber of Pool Echo Pirates. So Tony Langdon glances round and he sees that Phil Jeffrey is uh, causing no problems to him at the present moment. That uh, rider spreading a little bit in Heat 9. Uh, we've had some tremendous tussles so far this evening. And uh, this is only the second race, I would say, where it's been reasonably settled. Although, just as I say that, Lee Adams turns on the power and he's after Charlie McKinnett. In a, in a last minute do or die effort here can he make it round the outside it's going to go all the way to the line and Charlie shuts him out against the fence a win for Charlie McKenna second place Lee Adams and third Tony Langdon three points apiece and it's still three points separating the teams at 28 for Glasgow 25 for Poole Heat 10 with everything tightening up here at Shawfield. There's still a lot to race for with Steve Lawson and Shane Bowes for the 261 Tigers, Ali Stevens and Craig Boyce for the Puleco Pirates. Ali Stevens having a push at the tapes there. It's, it's frowned upon nowadays and uh, it's all right once you do it when you come up, but don't do it when the starter's orders comes on. But uh, that push has uh, done him the world of good because Craig Boyce shoots to the front and Ali Stevens almost made it into second place but immediately come under strong pressure from Steve Lawson from the back on the straight there. So Steve Lawson drops Sally Stevens and sets off in chase of Craig Boyce. But uh, Ali Stevens coming back up in the inside here. These Pool Echo Pirates can certainly ride Shawfield. They picked up the line almost immediately from the first time they set the bikes on the track and they've hugged that inside line and denied the 261 Tigers any passing on that uh, favourite spot of theirs. 
So the rider's spreading out and it's uh, a race at the back we're watching now with Shane Bowes uh, coming up to tackle Ali Stevens. Can he nip in for this solitary point and do a last minute do or die effort because it doesn't look as if Steve Lawson's going to do anything. And just as that happens, Ali Stevens drops out of the race and looks down at his bike in disgust and rolls into the centre green while up at the front the three points are going Craig Boyce's way with Steve Lawson, Shane Bowes in second place taking another three points and would you believe it, still three points separating the teams 31 to 261 Tigers, 28 to the Puleco Pirates Heat 11, will Heat 11 bring any respite from this tense uh, drama here at Shawfield? Three points still separating the teams, uh, could certainly go either way, there's an awful lot of racing to be done here and in this heat it's Kenny McKinnon and Jeff Powell who have to face Alan Roster and Gary Allen. So once he hits the front uh, there's not many mistakes from Kenny McKinnon and he made it sure that he was coming out the box that time. So he hits the front with the two pool echo pirates behind, Alan Roster and Gary Allen and in the Poor last place at the present moment, Jeff Powell, but looking down at the bike, and if that's uh, his skipper Steve Lawson's bike, he won't be too pleased if he's blown that one. So it's Jeff Powell out of heat number 11, and it's left to Kenny McKinnon to hold the three points for the 261 Tigers to keep this uh, match boiling over right into the last quarter. So plenty of space now and uh, comfort for the Scotland's number one, Kenny McKinnon, as he opens up a gap of some five or six lengths glances over his shoulder just to ensure that he's safe and coasting over the line into the last slap of Heat 11. Behind it's still Alan Roster and Gary Allen of course and they're assured of three points as uh, Jeff Powell has dropped out and if it finishes at this place as it most assuredly will it's still a three point deficit and uh, with the 261 Tigers 34 points and Pool Echo Pirates 31 points. 68.4 was Kenny McKinnis' time for that heat. Heat 12 brings out Steve Lawson and Phil Jeffrey yet again, and they're up against Lee Adams, and would you believe it, yet another ride for that uh, exciting youngster, Tony Langdon. Eyes down as they watch the tapes, and uh, who's going to make the break this time? It appears as if the skipper's on the inside, but there's a bump between Phil Jeffrey and Tony Langdon, and uh, Phil Jeffrey ends up all over the track, snaking back and forward. But uh, the skipper takes advantage of the confusion there on the first and second bends, and he comes through to the front. So yet again, Phil Jeffrey's going to have to do it from the back here if he's to pick up any heat advantage for the 261 Tigers, and he's certainly doing that as he squeezes over Lee Adams and uh, pushes him out to the fence takes the inside line and sets off after Tony Langdon and the crowd are loving this one Lee Adams comes firing back but I think that uh, Phil Jeffrey has a drop on him and indeed he has a drop on Tony Langdon Tony Langdon looked over his shoulder there and I think he was looking for his partner and got the fright of his life when he saw the blue helmeted Phil Jeffrey roaring up his inside so yet another tremendous heat 12 some Excellent racing here at Shawfield tonight, the best of the season, and uh, that was to be anticipated with the Pool Echo Pirates coming here looking for two National League points. Very important weekend for the Pool, of course, with matches at Berwick and Edinburgh, and uh, you could virtually say the league could be win and lost here at Shawfield tonight. So a tremendous 5-1 for the 261 Tigers. They stretch the gap to 39 points to the Pool Echo Pirates 32 in a time of 68.8.
Well, against many other teams, I'm sure the Tigers could begin to relax just a little just now, but Heat 13, they certainly can't relax against the mighty Pool Echo Pirates. And Heat 13 brings out Charlie and Kenny McKenna, the famous 5-1 pairing of recent matches, and they're up against Tony Lyndon and Craig Boyce. As you can see, Kenny McKenna makes the break with uh, Tony Langdon in second place. And Charlie McKenna having a dull, fair old ding-dong at the back there with Craig Boyce. And uh, he's not winning out of it at all because he made a mess of that corner. And uh, Craig Boyce comes firing back up through the inside. So Charlie has it all to do again and he sets about the uh, task with gusto. But uh, might find it a bit more difficult this time as Tony Langdon and Craig Boyce link up here. And uh, try to block the effervescent Charlie at the back. Certainly can't fault Charlie in recent weeks for effort. Uh, the 100% effort every week has had the crowd on its toes and uh, it certainly has it just now as they scream Charlie's name as he comes down the back straight and tries to take Craig Boyce in the outside but finds that the two Pool Echo Pirates are still locked in front of them. They've realised that they can't do anything about, Charlie, about Kenny McKenna so they're going to hold out Charlie as best they can and try and keep the three points but uh, there you are, he was watching and he nipped up the inside and he took that right on the very tip of the line and you can see he's absolutely delighted with that. Four points for the 261 Tigers and two to the Pool Echo Pirates gives them a total of 43 points to the Echo Pirates 34 points and achieved in a time of 68.2. Well that certainly brings the smiles to Shoffield because that means that the Glasgow club hold a nine point advantage over the 261, over the Pool Echo Pirates and here comes Charlie to enjoy the cheers of the crowd, and well deserved too. Everything going to plan tonight? No, not going to plan at all, I'm afraid. We're, uh, unfortunately, in that, in that second heat when Kevin got um, hurt, when he got knocked off, it's, um, it's not thrown everything askew, and we've overloaded the, the other reserve, Tony Langdon, quite heavily, and now he is sort of fairly exhausted. He's had a lot, quite a lot of rides in a very short time. But it's uh, unbalanced the whole setup of the team, unfortunately. And uh, as well as that, we're, gonna, we're carrying Ali Stevens. He just seems to be right off. We can't do a thing tonight for some reason. So what's your contingency plans? Oh, well, we're, we're, a bit, um, we're in a bit of a tight spot at the moment. We're just going to let this race go on. As soon as this one's over, we're seven points behind. We're in the tactical. We'll make a change in the next heat. We'll probably make a double tactical change in the next heat. Well, we'll be looking forward to see that, to produce some more exciting racing tonight. Well, yes, I hope so. Yeah, it has been quite an exciting meeting, and uh, I hope we can sort of pull it off in the last couple of heats. Well, thank you very much. OK. Thank Thanks. Neil Street telling us that there's two tactical substitutes coming up. The only thing was he didn't name them, but he has now, and that's Lee Adams in white and Alan Ruster in yellow and black, coming in for Gary, Gary Allen and Kevin Smart, and they're up against Shane Bowes and Martin McKinna. And uh, very clever tactics from the... Neil Street to the team manager of Poole. Shane yet again making a mess of the start. Uh, don't really know what's wrong with him tonight, but he hasn't come out of that box cleanly at all. And as you saw in his very first race, flipped the bike completely over. So the, a very good tactical substitute here from the, the Poole team and making full advantage of it because uh, at the present moment, Martin and uh, Shane Bowes are trying to sort out between them who's actually going to do the chasing. Uh, Martin seems to be chasing up the inside and uh, Shane, he seems to be all over the track. Uh, but it looks as if he's got it together now and he's putting in a serious challenge against the two Pool Echo Pirates uh, who are locked together, masters of team riding, uh, one in the inside, one in the outside and it really takes some of the Australian heroics from young Shane to split the pairing. Martin again has wisely dropped back and kept out of things. He knows that he would only get in his partner's way if he was involved there, sitting back and just watching what's happening and uh, ready to take advantage of any slip-ups in the pairing in front. But it doesn't look as if there's going to be any slip-ups because they're covering the outside. Sheen locking back onto the inside and trying the run-up towards the gate, but uh, just loses out at the very last fraction. And by goodness, that certainly ended up a close one. So the tactical substitute works. 5-1 for the Pool Echo Pirates. They pull back their four points uh, to 44-39 to in a winning time of 69.8. As you watch the replay, it just confirms that the Bill Echo Pirates just made it on the line. Maybe they thought they were a little further ahead than they actually were. So that makes it a very, very interesting last two heats because the Tigers could still lose this one after being nine points up in the earlier heat. So it's heat 15 and it's up to Kenny McKenna and Charlie McKenna to hold the advantage against Lee Adams and Ali Stevens. As you heard Neil Street saying earlier, uh, Ali Stevens sadly out of touch tonight. Uh, maybe a good thing for the home team because he, he'd been firing. Maybe they wouldn't be sitting with an advantage just now. 
But uh, Kenny McKenna, he uh, realises the importance of uh, a heat win here. And uh, his brother Charlie, of course, realises the importance of picking up some points too. But he's got two very prolific riders in front of him. Lee Adams and uh, Ali Stevens at last producing some form and holding out Charlie McKenna. So Kenny McKenna well away there. And uh, Lee Adams, uh, good ten lengths behind now with his partner Ali Stevens immediately behind him in third place. And although Charlie's firing that bike into the corners, he's making no impression on the two pool pirates whatsoever. And I'm afraid he's going to sit there stone last till the end of this race. Only about the second or third time at the very most. We've seen the riders spread out like this this evening. Uh, every single race has been uh, contested very, very hard. And uh, was that Kenny putting his hand up with relief or had he a bike fever on the line? It doesn't matter. He took the three points and uh, holds the gap at five points with 47 to the 261 Tiger and 42 to the Pool Echo Pirates. It was relief when Kenny punched the air and you can see that. Uh, a while since I've seen the uh, McKenna wheelies and no doubt we'll see another one here. Up it goes to the roars of the Sheffield crowds. Well, 47 points to 42, and of course, with a five-point gap, the 261 Tigers can't be beat. No wonder Kenny McKenna was delighted with that heat win. And uh, although it's academic, it's uh, unfair to say that to the four competitors in Heat 16. That's uh, Steve Lawson, Phil Jeffrey, Alan Roster and Craig Boyce. And uh, this was certainly a, a match that the Tigers didn't expect to win. Although saying that, uh, speaking to the, the riders down before the start of the match, they were fired up. They had nothing to lose. So they were certainly going to give it all they could. And by goodness, they've pulled off one of the shock results of the season. So the 261 Tigers in the last heat of a tremendous National League match with at present skipper Steve Lawson leading the quartet. In second place in white, it's Alan Rossiter. He's followed by his partner Craig Boyce, while Phil Jeffrey tries to attack from the back. Pleasing, as I say, for the home fans to see Phil Jeffrey coming back to something like his uh, normal form. Although he's missed out in a couple of races, he picked up some vital points for the 261 Tigers tonight. And, uh, uh, certainly contributed to their win over Pool Echo Pirates. So it's the skipper Steve Lawson with a fairly comfortable lead here in Heat 16. Glances over his shoulder as he takes the checker flag. Second place Alan Roster and third place Craig Boyce. And that ties it all up with a tremendous 50 points for the 261 Tigers, 45 points for the Pool Echo Pirates and the final time of tonight 69 seconds. Tremendous match here at Shawfield tonight and full credit to both the 261 Tigers and of course their opponents, the Pool Echo Pirates. Coming across the line, Alan Roster and uh, Steve Lawson acknowledging the cheers and the presentations down on the centre green. So the boys sang... Uh, you can see Phil Jeffrey, in fact, physically having a sigh of relief. He's glad that one's over. And here comes the 261 Tigers to acknowledge the cheers of the Shawfield crowd. And they are certainly giving them the Shawfield roar, as it's become known here. Their voices are in good song. And uh, a well-deserved round of applause to the 261 Tigers as Kenny McKenna tries to wreck the back end of the, the tractor. Just looking at Phil Jeffrey, he's uh, giving the royal wave. <laughs> That's it, Jeff. Do you show him how to do it? You're supposed to move your hands, Phil. So there we are, once again, the final score of tonight's National League match here at Shawfield. 50 points for the 261 Tigers, 45 points for the Pool Echo Pirates.
Kenny, firstly, can you tell us about last night in the start of Anglia? Last night was uh, a very long way away, a very damp evening, and uh, miserable all round. Apart from that, it was great. Uh, it was uh, the start of Anglia. It's one of these uh, annual events down at Ipswich. Uh, I've been in it two or three times before in British League. They invited me to do it uh, this year now that the National League again. And uh, so I sort of turned up with the bike. And came second. Yeah, yeah, I think that was a bonus. Uh, I went down there obviously hoping to do reasonably well. But uh, the idea was just to have a ride round and, uh, you know, enjoy racing. But uh, as it happened on the night, things were going my way possibly. And uh, I ended up in second place, yeah. Things were certainly going Glasgow's way tonight as well. Weren't they just? Uh, I, I think possibly all the good fortune was, was with Glasgow just na uh, tonight, which we actually needed. Uh, without luck, we would not have beaten Pool. So uh, Pool are very talented and uh, they, they go about their business in a, a very professional way. So uh, I think the boys can be very pleased and uh, very relieved that the meeting's over with. And uh, I don't think I'd like to meet Pool every week anyway. And once again, the crowd came out on top. Just exactly. I mean, it was a fantastic meeting. Uh, you can always tell a fantastic meeting because all the riders are absolutely shattered by the end of it. Uh, it's real hard work out there. But in the end, as you say, the crowd, the crowd are the winners uh, and the sport in general. It was a fantastic meeting. And uh, as I say, we're, we're glad it's over with and now we'll go to the bar. <laughs> well, thank you very much, then. Thank you. Leave that donkey alone. Go, mule, go! Pleased with the result? Delighted. Delighted. Come on, next question. <laughs> That's shocking, isn't yeah, it? You yeah. thought I was going to fold it up, didn't you? Come on. No, yeah. I thought you were going to wind me up as usual. No, not me. Wouldn't do anything <laughs> like that. And uh, pleased with the team's performance? To a man. I'm, I'm quick tonight. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a good team effort, yeah. When we were nine points up there, I thought, well, we can't throw it away now. And then... Uh, they got a 5-1 in eight. <laughs> they got a 5-1 in eight, 14. And Kenny made sure we got the match. But I, think, I don't think anybody's taking a blind bit of notice of this. There's an Australian hanging in there. Right, next question. On a more serious note. What was the track like? It looked rather wet and sticky. Um, it, it was better than it has been. Um, it was nice and damp, you know. When it, when it dries out, you... You notice tonight there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of passing, and if you get the track damp, you, you get better racing. I think it was. <laughs> Leave me out of it. Next, next quiz. He's asking me. He's not even filming me now. Danny will eat Kenny McKinnon next week. Kenny is dead meat. He's going down on the first. Things haven't gone your way uh, recently, but it all came together tonight. Oh, no, no. Um, well, last few meetings, last three, four meetings, tonight wasn't too bad, but last three meetings before that have been pretty bad. I was I was going pretty good on a, on a Southern Tour and a few meetings before that, and then uh, I thought I was, it would cool come together and I was going to get a few points like every week, but just for some reason they just went backwards. I don't know why, but just just one of them things, you know, wrong place at the wrong time, but can't help it. Tonight I was, had a bit better night, still lacking it out the start really badly, but um, after having to do it the hard way from the back. But it was, it was a good meeting tonight, and I think every, every, everyone put in at least one good ride, which you, which um, which you need to win a match, and we did it. We were talking to a couple of your fans earlier on that have set up a fan club. What do you think of that? Oh, it's good. A uh, good, uh, good bunch of girls, and it should be good. <laughs> Tell us about the Shane Bowes fan club. Well, it started about six weeks ago. Um, you get three newsletters a year, a membership card, a signed photograph, and a profile on Shane. And junior members also receive birthday and Christmas cards. What age do you have to be to qualify as a junior member? Under 16. And how do you think Shane will fare tonight? All right. Peter McNamara was only fined £25 after the rather nasty incident in the pits last week. Would you like to pass any comment? No, he was, he was just being totally out of order, really, because I think the way it happens is, like, he stuffed me on the first corner and I only come off, but, like, that's Speedway. So I just come back underneath him, went past him. As far as I was concerned, I was past him. And I was, like, on my own line, and he... 
he was like behind me and I don't even know where he was but but um he reckons I I'm trying to put him in the fence so I can't see how I did that and he just got really angry about it I think you he, he just he was just got upset because he he only scored two points the whole day and that sort of says it all and he just like it got him wound up but he's just totally out of order but that's that's the way things go and thankful it's all been resolved I don't know if it's been resolved it's still a little black book <laughs> <laughs> Phil, a better night tonight. Yeah, I quite enjoyed it tonight. It was a mix of change. Like I've had a rough time this last well last month, you know. Two months. Struggling, <laughs> struggling pretty badly. But uh, you just need, you know, one or two good races, and it brings your confidence back up again. You know, so hopefully that'll be it. It'll be away now. We've seen a lot of publicity about this new training track at Linlithgow, which is very near your home, and I hear you've been quite involved with us. Would you like to tell us about it? Yeah, it's it's only about uh, five miles from where I live. So, well, the bloke that owns it, I work for him, so Alan Robertson. So it's quite handy, like, you know, and he lets us out whenever I want. Well, it's Wednesday night. Wednesday night I can get out Saturday and Sunday. So if I've got a problem, you know, I can go up there and try and sort things out. Do you think it'll help our juniors? Oh, I definitely. That's what's been needing, needed up here, you know. If young lads can can get started there pretty early, you know, for now. just at 12, 13 or something like that, and just come through, you know, it should be all right. And hopefully they'll sign for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much, then. Right, thanks. How did you enjoy it tonight? Um, yeah, it was good. The track was a little bit slick and um, everything seemed to go all right, but we just didn't have the, as much luck on the night, so we were a bit unlucky. We all are set to win the league, even at this early stage. What's, what's your thought on that? Yeah, well, I think for sure we can still win the league. It all depends if um, all the boys get their act together a bit. At the moment, we're starting to um, fall apart a bit, but I think we'll be right. First night of your uh, tough northern tour, how do you think you'll fare? Oh, well, good. The travel just doesn't really worry me. And um, we lost tonight. We'll be in a bit of a downer for tomorrow, but I'm sure we can pull our socks up and win tomorrow night. I'd love to think we could pull it off, but I've got to be realistic and say, if it was a bet manner, I'd think it would have a colour bob and Well, I, think, I don't think anybody's taking it blind, but they notice it. If it was a bet manner, I think it would have a colour bob and pro. Well, I'm glad to see somebody with a lot of confidence. It's good, I like the track. Uh, shape wise, uh, surface, it's really good, so hopefully we'll be able to pull off a win. Be nice. Look. Hi, I'm glad to be in here. It's fresh when you're still, when you're going on like that. 
and the bike not being not me being used to it, that was different than now, so I'm just pleased. Of course we've got a chance. Good grief, we're further ahead of pool now than what we were against Edinburgh last week, but anything can happen. I'm not going to say anything. As I say, every, every race is hard, and uh, who's to say what's going to happen now? There's a long way to go. Ten races. Right, next question. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, you've been into the donkey again. <laughs> now don't be dirty. Now don't be dirty. <laughs> On a more serious note. Seeing things had... Stop fixing your hair. <laughs> Makes a change, like I've had a rough time this last, well, last month, you know. Two months. Struggling. <laughs> been struggling pretty badly, but... Uh... I think every, every, everyone put in at least one good ride. Which, uh, which, um, which you need to win a match, and we did it. I don't think anybody's taking their blind bit of notice of this. <laughs> You can keep up to date with all the news about the 261 Tigers by calling the Glasgow Tigers hotline on 0898 654 617. That's 0898 654 617. The hotline features first news of all the Tigers' home and away fixtures, interviews with the riders, plus all the latest information about the Tigers. In the event of a match being cancelled because of the weather, the hotline will have first news of the cancellation. Calls are charged at 25 pence per minute off-peak and 38 pence per minute at all other times.